Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a white, black and green or Absan mid-range deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Mid-range meaning that we don't have any particular synergies, we're just playing good cards at every point in the curve, we've got cheap removal to hold off aggro decks, and enough grindy late game value engines to keep up with control decks. So let's take a look at the entire deck at 1 mana, starting out with Blood Chief's Thirst as a nice cheap removal spell, can also be kicked later in the game to take out larger creatures and planeswalkers. At 2 mana we've got 2 copies of Easy Prey which can destroy a creature with converted mana cost 2 or less so can take care of most threats out of the blue-black rogues deck and against decks that don't have a ton of cheap creatures we can always cycle it for 2 mana and draw a card. Then we've got Scavenging Ooze, giving us a bit of Graveyard Hate in the main deck, also excellent against any mill decks as we'll have plenty of food for the Ooze to gain life and get plus 1 plus 1 counters. And then Wolf Hollow Haven gives us a bit of early ramp to ramp into our more powerful cards a little bit sooner. Then at 3 mana we've got 2 copies of Elspeth's Nightmare, which is also a great card against a rogues deck, since we can take out a creature with the first chapter, make the opponent discard maybe a removal spell or a counter spell with the second chapter, and then exile their graveyard with the last one, which can also be effective at stopping Lurus from getting back creatures from the graveyard. Then we've got two copies of Mythos of Nethroi, which is one of the incentives for going into white instead of just being black green. Can destroy any non-land permanent as long as we spend green and white mana to cast it, otherwise can take out any creature. And then we've got the full playset of Lanor Visionary, draws a card when it enters the battlefield, and also helps us ramp into our bigger stuff a turn sooner. Then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Yasharn Implacable Earth, searches up a basic forest and basic plains when it enters the battlefield, so helps us hit our land drops, and then also prevents players from paying life for sacrificing non-land permanents to cast spells or activate abilities. The only non-bow in our deck is that we cannot sacrifice our Wolf Hollow Haven if Yasharn is in play to make a wolf token, but that's not a play that comes up a whole lot. And then we've got two copies of Polucronos Unchained as a powerful escape card, so another card that can potentially punish mill decks, as we can get access to it from the graveyard by exiling six other cards and for six mana. And then Polucronos enters the battlefield with six plus one plus one counters on it. If we escaped it, enters with 12 plus one plus one counters instead, and damage is prevented to Polucronos, and instead we remove that many plus one plus one counters. And for one, a black and a green, it can fight another target creature, so excellent at taking out small rogues from the blue black deck. Then we've got two copies of Extinction Vent as our sweeper of choice, we can choose odd or even, and exile each creature with converted mana cost of the chosen value, tokens usually being even. And then at 5 mana we've got more removal with Elspeth Conquers Death, another incentive to go into white, can exile target permanent and opponent controls with converted mana cost 3 or greater, on the second chapter makes the opponent's non-creature spells more expensive, and on the final chapter we can return a creature or planeswalker from the graveyard to the battlefield with a plus 1 counter or a loyalty counter on it. And we've got a few planeswalkers in the deck as well with two copies of a Vivian Monster's Advocate, which can provide card advantage with the passive ability letting us play creatures of the top, can make beast tokens with the plus one with our choice of Vigilance, Reach or Trample and probably won't be using the minus two a whole lot. And then we also have two copies of Elder Gergroth as another powerful five drop that we can ramp into a turn sooner thanks to Wolf Hollow Haven and Visionary, a 6-6 six, six with Vigilance, Reach and Trample. When Gergroth attacks or blocks we either make a 3-3 three, three beast token, we gain three life or we draw a card, so plenty of value to be gained there as well. And then topping off our curve, a singleton copy of Garrick Cursed Huntsman, which can kill stuff with the minus three and draw card, can make two wolf tokens, and then the minus six if enough wolf tokens die, allows us to make an emblem, giving our creatures a permanent plus three plus three and trample bonus. And then we also have a singleton copy of Eerie Ultimatum as another incentive to go into white, and so that I won't get yelled at in the comments, can return any number of permanent cards with different names from our graveyard to the battlefield, so also has great synergy with our planeswalkers and our sagas like Elspeth's Nightmare and Elspeth Conquers Death which we can return as well, so plenty of synergy in our deck and of course great against any deck trying to mill us if we happen to draw the Eerie Ultimatum. Then looking forward at Kaldheim, there's definitely a few cards that catch my attention when it comes to this abs on midrange style, especially the 4 mana uncommon saga Binding of the Old Gods that lets us destroy an online permanent, search up a land and then give our creatures death touch on the final chapter, also has great synergy with cards like Eerie Ultimatum since we can get back the saga and it also helps us ramp. And then going over the mana base, we've got a few basic lands to search up with our four copies of Fabled Passage and with our Yasharn, so we've got two planes, two forests, two swamps, 
as well as two copies of Castle Lochthwain, which is great against any controlling deck, giving us a nice card draw engine in the late game. And then the eight pathways that are currently available, with a black-white one and the green-white one, as well as two copies of Temple of Melody, comes into play tapped, lets us cry one, and the full four in that Trium, which comes into play tapped, but can also be cycled for three mana to draw a card in the late game. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand, a lot of mana. So usually I would wait on playing Temple until I get a bit more information. But in this case I know for a fact that I don't need land so I can bottom any land I see. I like this here, Fabled Passage. Facing C8 Reborn. So let's see what we're up against here. We've got a turn 2 Haven, turn 3, got a few options, can play a Sharn, can play another haven plus maybe a visionary opponent on blue whites haven resolves opponent with a frantic inventory end of turn and maze mind tomb all right so I think we'll stick to the plan of Haven plus Visionary to give us the most mana. Although I guess we aren't really using that mana for anything, so maybe getting Yasharn in play, getting my double white sorted for Conqueror's Death is better. Needs try and play before we can start activating castle. So next turn I could also go for Haven plus Visionary plus Triome and then set up castle afterwards. Right, opponent is a mill deck after all. As we see Ruin Cramp plus Fabled Passage. It's gonna mill us for a bunch and there's Polychronos so a nice creature to escape out of the graveyard. So we'll hit for four. And yeah, let's stick to the plan here. Haven into Visionary. Typically don't see Rune Crab in blue-white, so opponent might have a few surprises for us. Opponent passes, two mana up, so I'm one card short of escaping Polychronos here. Good extinction event on odd, although that also gets rid of my visionary. Could also play Conqueror's Death just to make use of the second and third chapters, although that seems a bit of a waste. So I guess we can attack. Could also sacrifice a wolf full of haven to put an extra card in graveyard. Nor do I want an extinction event. Sacrificing haven could let me escape Polychronos, but it's also nice to be able to escape Polychronos and potentially fight in the same turn, which we can if Visionary survives. So maybe I do just Conqueror's Death here. Uh, it gets negated. That's fine. So now I can escape Polychronos next turn and fight right away. Tutelage would have been a nice Conqueror's Death target. But we're also presenting a lot of damage here. And Polychronos we can keep getting back. Probably should have kept a creature in the graveyard in case we find scavenging ooze. So now they could have a shatter the sky to kill my creatures. 
Although I get to draw a card. And Tutor Lich milling us also makes it easy to keep escaping Polychronos. It's gonna be inventory. Which can mill for another four here. And a nine lives. Alright, I see. So that's how they are gonna plan to stay alive a little bit longer. Yeah, that's pretty effective here. And I kind of have to overextend into it. So three out of nine counters. Do I play Gargoth or do I just activate Castle here? I think I'm better off activating Castle, see what I draw first. Ooh, Conqueror's Death, all right. Now I'll get rid of Tutelage. And now I'm not overextending into a Shatter the Sky as much. So we get to draw a card. Next turn the opponent's stuff is going to be more expensive. And on the final chapter we get something back. So I think I'll play Gergoroth. Play Ooze. Might have used too much green mana here to cast Gergoroth, but that's okay. The size of the Ooze doesn't really matter with 9 lives. And I don't want to exile my own creatures, because that reduces the amount of cards in Graveyard for escape. I can, however, exile the opponent's frantic inventory, which I probably should do before they untap. Supponent digging for an answer. Next turn conquers death. Can get back a planeswalker like Garrick. Which is excellent against nine lives. Yeah, drawing that second Conqueror's Death was awesome. And my opponent explodes. Yeah, Garrick just gonna deliver the beatdown and ask the opponent a question they cannot answer. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. If Visionary survives, can maybe conquer death on turn 4 into turn 5 Garrick. Opponent appears to be on a controlling deck. Do we see removal for the Ooze? Heartless Act takes it out before it could get a counter. And a Cultivate, alright. Opponent is ramping now. So, we'll see whether or not this is a good matchup for Conqueror's Death. For now, I guess Planes Visionary. We've got all the lanes we need now. Eliminate deals with visionaries, so no conqueror's death for us. But there's also nothing to get rid of. So that's alright. Haven can enchant one of our basics just in case of a field of ruin. You never know. Frantic inventory draws a card. So still not quite sure what our opponent's up to. Another Cultivate. Well, probably just gonna tap out for Garrick here. And if Garrick dies, we can eventually get it back with Conqueror's Death. Good 
could see removal on one of the tokens, maybe. Yep, eliminates deals with a wolf. Garrick gains a loyalty. And a heartless act on the second token. So I could ultimate Garrick here if I wanted to. Ooh, and a Vivian to draw too. Yeah, making an emblem seems worth it. Typically we would want to make some wolf tokens first and then make an emblem once we have a board presence, but I just want to ensure that we get that emblem before something bad happens. Vivian is negated. That's fine. Keep the green in case we need more green for scavenging ooze. And we can also make wolf tokens with Haven. And our opponent explodes, yeah. Making two 5-5 five, five tokens with trample each turn is going to be difficult to overcome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Lurus of the Dream Den deck. Uh, yeah, this sounds fine. Opponent might be on Rogues, in which case Nightmare is an excellent card to have. We've got good mana, bit of ramp. So we'll see. Turn one, Merfolk Wind Robber. Rogues confirmed. I guess we won't show them the swamp yet. I do want to play Nightmare as soon as possible before they can counter it with a Drown. I guess playing the White Pathway gets punished if we draw a tap land here, so probably should have just played out the black side. So Nightmare cannot be drowned, kills a Wind Robber, and next turn can maybe take a counter spell. Alright, opponent gonna play Enforcer in response. And Garrick is looking pretty nice too here. Opponent puts Lurus in hand for the turn. Nightmare sees a wall of removal spells. Guess we'll take Heartless Act, although never mind, I guess Thirst can kill Garrick, whereas Heartless Act cannot. Even though, if they want to kill one of my other creatures, it's going to be a little easier with Heartless Act. And then play Yasharn. So Garrick is going to get cast next turn. Opponent's graveyard is going to disappear, but not before they can get back Merfolk Wind Robber. Although I like my chances with Garrick in play. And even a Polucranos. Oh yeah, this is going to be a massacre. Should probably get in. And maybe that's a little greedy. Now they can kill my two wolves and attack Garrick, although I'll gain a bit of loyalty to here. And then we can play Polychronos and fight. And Heartless Act not very effective against Polychronos since it only removes counters instead of outright killing it, and my opponent concedes. So yeah, a nice early Elspeth's Nightmare to cripple the opponent and better ramp into Garrick seems to be doing the job. So one of Garrick showing up quite a lot, which I'm not too sad about. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Got some cheap removal in case we're up against an aggressive deck, and then maybe turn 3 Visionary, turn 4 Gargroth. Get the temple out of the way. Don't think I'll need Extinction Event, but I will take a fourth land. Turn one, a Sanctum of Tranquil Lights. The Sanctum deck. 
do have a few answers to the sanctums here between our mythos of Nathroi and uh, Elspeth Conqueror's death, although could be tough. Probably don't need double green. Let's get a planes. Opponent with a lot of basic lands for being a Sanctum deck. Should probably get a forest in case the visionary dies. Alright, Calm Waters. It's gonna give them some card draw. Sadly, don't get to play Garrick since we drew a tap land. Could play a second Garagroth. Or I could attack first, draw a card, not send with a visionary, and decide afterwards what to do. Because drawing an untapped land here and playing Garrick would be much better in case of a sweeper. Well, I guess we're all in on the opponent not having a sweeper now. Play Temple. Nightmare's probably going to be too slow. So planes shatter the sky could be bad. Swamp extinction events. Ah, that's not too bad. So they've got three sanctums, but it's gonna cost them two cards to kill one Gergroth. Kills Visionary instead. So that prevents us from killing them, but they're still taking twelve. I should probably make one beast draw one card. I would really like to play Garrick, so maybe draw two to make that more likely is better. Yeah, I guess so. Fabian's good too. And then, don't think it matters which mode we choose. So our opponent's got a lot of things to deal with here. If they have a sweeper, they might be okay, because then they can play a board wipe and start using Sanctum to deal with Vivian. All right, and there's Shatter. So they're not dead yet. Although they will be one damage short of outright killing Vivian. Another Vivian on top. So Garrick make some wolves. I'd like you to meet my friend, Stompy. So they'll need another shatter. Ooh, eerie ultimatum. What's that doing there? and pulling off the Sanctum deck with only basic lands is quite impressive. I didn't expect to be prey. So if their plan is just to use Sanctum, they need all three activations for my creatures. I guess they can also tap down stuff with Tranquil Light, but yeah, there are two, so every single creature is lethal here and my opponent explodes. So yeah, they almost managed to stabilize here, but uh, tokens from our Planeswalkers get the job done. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine-looking hand facing a Lurus deck. Got early ramp into Nightmare. And if our opponent's trying to mill us, having Eerie Ultimatum in hand could be fun. Alright, opponent's on a Black Sacrifice deck instead. So hopefully we can draw a few lands along the way since we've got all the expensive cards we need. Nightmare also very effective against a mono black deck. Can take out Eidolon. Could also Extinction Event on Odd. I think I just want to get Nightmare in play. Opponent doesn't appear to have 
village rights. This can be black. Eventually need triple black for ultimatum. Puts lures in hand. Alright, so Call of the Death Dweller, Deadweight Glass Casket. What do we want to get rid of? So next turn they can play Lurus, get back Eidolon. Not really concerned about any of these cards, to be honest. And maybe should just get rid of Call, which can get back Lurus, which could be the most annoying long term. And then for now, play Polucronos. Next turn they can go Lurus, get back Eidolon, and then we can Extinction Event on Odd. Seems pretty good. Yasharn also excellent, but we'll play it safe here. And leave the opponent with pretty much nothing, and they concede. Well, that was a fast one. Alright, we're on the draw. Don't think I can keep a hand without green mana here. This is a little bit better. Although, not sure what to get rid of. Getting rid of Thirst seems greedy. Could ditch Gargaroth, but I might want a second threat. So maybe it's a land, and then just try and keep land on top with Temple. And then maybe for now get rid of a basic land. Eh, forest is fine. And a Cleric of Life spawn, so black white life gain. Alright, so Thirst isn't a bad answer here. Can keep passage for later, could fetch now. Next turn I get to play Ooze and exile a creature. Cleric number two plus speaker. Alright. So we'll see if the ooze holds or if they have removal for it. Hallowed Priest. That's a good one too here. This one's only legal in best of one as an arena exclusive. And Scour Baron's putting us some work too. Take four. Alright, I think we go for Polychronos just to try and hold the fort. Although there is something to be said for Visionary, try and ramp into Garrick as soon as possible. Problem is Speaker of the Heavens is also going to become an issue soon. So I might even want to attack with Ooze. And then just trade it for Priests. If they offer. Do I want double black or double white? Double white for Conqueror's Death isn't super relevant in this matchup, I don't think. I guess it could have Heliod. Um, double black would be for Thirst, but their creatures are small. So I guess white it is. And at least their life total is a little bit lower where Speaker of the Heavens isn't an immediate threat. Now we can fight it with Polychronos too. Alright, so I think Haven plus Fight is the way to go. And then probably just Fight, let's see. Could Fight Cleric now, and then Speaker later. If I Fight Speaker now, Cleric might be too big for me to fight. So let's do that. And pass. Veto. Veto is scary. Can Nightmare it? 
And that's my entire turn gone. Um, I guess I get to activate Ooze as well. It's probably still worth it. So let's see. Got some green mana. Activate Ooze. And then we can use Ooze again here if we wanted to. Do I want to attack? Not really. And then if we draw land, we can play Garruk. If not, we've got a few options. All out attack. Opponent could gain life at instant speed. I'm fine trading Polychronos for Speaker. Also prevents the damage so they don't gain the life from lifelink. And then just block the smaller priest in case they gain life at instant speed, I suppose. Alright, Heartless Act to remove two counters, but we can still eat afterwards. So that's a reason why you don't want to activate Ooze right away. And we're in a pretty stable position here. Probably just double ramp, play Garruk, which should close out the game a little bit better than Garagroth here, although I don't think it matters too much. And I guess now we'll eat so we can attack right away. Next turn we'll exile the opponent's graveyard, so I might want to eat a creature before that happens. Alright, Castle Lockthway, not a bad draw for the opponent. Gives him a way to refuel. So, yeah, I think in response to the Nightmare here, could take my draw step first to have a look, but this seems good enough. And then I can still play Garrick. Play this as a black source, so we have triple black for ultimatum. So, worst case scenario, they have a Blood Chief's Thirst to kill Garruk, but that's most of their turn gone. That's fine. So, you can chump or maybe even double block. Do I want to exile anything? Probably not. Thirst is excellent. So, probably just minus here. Kill the priest. And then attack for lethal. Attack with all, they might have removal, in which case the game continues. But they're still dead here. Alright. Had the cheap removal to hold off the black-white clerics. Scavenging Ooze also putting in a ton of work and Polychronos. And once again we managed to draw one of Garrick, so... Yeah, can definitely see adding a second Garruk I had two in the deck before adding Eerie Ultimatum. But this is also a deck that's very customizable, as you can see. And uh, you can pretty much fit in your favorite cards. And it's also a deck that plays well or translates well in best of three, where you can potentially make a nice sideboard and customize the deck for specific matchups, add more hand disruption and value engines against control, maybe add more cheap interaction against creature decks, can swap out some removal spells as well, easy prey for instance, good against rogue decks and the fact that you can cycle it is nice against control so it's not a dead card, but against maybe a red green adventure aggro deck you would rather have heartless act or eliminate which lines up a little bit better. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.